I teach cost accounting, I teach management accounting, not financial accounting. I've been asked to talk about sustainability and some people probably ask, what is the connection? Wow. And I'm thinking, sustainability, what is that? And when you go to Bloomberg or you open up the business papers, you want to learn about are companies being sustainable or not? What do you read about? What did you read about? What was the big news last week? With Apple, what happened with Apple last week? Hello? Come on, what happened? A lot of money. <laughs> it, it revised down its forecast of its top line revenue. Is that, got to, is that got anything to do with sustainability? No. Because that's all about marketing, it's all about sales. Okay. Yesterday, Samsung came across and said, oh, we've got to put our forecast down. Their sales forecasts, their stock price went down. Is that got anything to do about sustainability? Not really. It's all about the top line. It's all about the top line, making sales. Okay. Very rarely do you hear about in the business news, Bloomberg, CNBC, in all those Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, very rarely do you get to read about sustainability because sustainability is about cost management. It's not about going out and marketing and selling more. Yes, we can start, we can change our bottles from plastic to glass. That, you know, we hear about that, you know, that's window dressing, okay? Real sustainability comes by managing the costs, managing the resources. But the problem is, as a student, there's not many articles about that. All you hear about is marketing. All you hear about is the trade war. Is that right, the trade war? Like the trade war, in some ways, is the best thing for sustainability because you have much less transactions going on around the world. You have much less pollution going around the world. You have much less wastage. And you have people in developed countries like USA, Australia, Canada, and Europe paying more for goods from China. That might be a good thing because now they won't just buy, buy, buy all the time. Sustainability is about conservation sometimes at that end. But very rarely do you hear about that with a trade war. Okay, it's so negative. They always say, oh, this is bad for the country. All right, so that's all you hear about in the news today. What I'm going to show you today are things that I have seen by going into factories in China. As a cost accountant, I want to know how are these factories being sustainable? And what can you look for to see if those factories that you work with today are going to be around in three years, four years, five years time? That's the big question. I have seen, I've been in the factories, they're here today and they're gone. I'll show you a video of a factory that's gone, okay? I'm going to show you some factory audits. I'm going to show you two factories and, I, and you're going to get to choose which one would you source from. Okay, so this is real today, okay? Not theory. I'll give you some theory, but theory is very easy, all right? This is real. So what I'm going to show you right at the start, <clears throat> we'll start with, it's my background there, you can find out more about that. You have the slides, and so there you have that. But <clears throat> this is what I do, a background before we get into it. All right? I go into these factories here. And the question I have for you is, when you see factories in developing countries, you think, oh, they're all the same. They're not all the same. All factories are different. This one here is making a bucket load of money by selling USBs to clubs, associations, corporations around the world to give out as gifts. Now, if you get a USB as a gift and it doesn't work, Right, USB uh, drive. Do you complain? Put your hand up if you complain. No one complains. So, is it important for this factory to have quality control? No! It doesn't matter. And the factory's making money. The factory's still there today. 
That's a business model. Okay? This factory here at the top is selling audio products that go into cars. Most of its uh, most of its customers are auto manufacturers in China. Do you think they care about the quality? Hands up, yes or no? Yes. Of course they do. Big difference. So this factory pays more attention to the quality than this one here. Okay? But both of these factories are sustainable. They have different business models. That's the difference. Let me just turn down the volume of this. Get it ready. Because uh, I'll be fighting with the video all, all, all morning. Let's have a look here. Alright? I just want to turn down the volume here. Can we get the... Uh, here we go. I, I want to hear myself. You don't need to hear me in the factory. Alright, what other things do I do? I go into trade shows and then I give advice to buyers. Should you buy product A? Should you buy product B? Right? Maybe I get back to sustainability in a minute. But you need to know operationally when theoretically we say, oh, sustainability is about conservation of resources. Well, what does that mean? I'm here today to show you what that means, the resources. I want to show you by the resources I've seen in these factories. And so here are two different headphones that you can buy. You can buy the very cheap one or the very expensive one. Okay, which factory do you think will have better QC? The cheap one? Or the expensive one. Oh, come on, I want to show of hands now. We're doing comparisons today. Hands up for the cheap one, hands up for the expensive one. This is total quality control, okay? Alright, so let's that's what you see on the trade show floor. Many of you have been to trade shows, you've seen that before. What I do is go into the factory. Here are the exact same factories for those two products. Wow. Neil, how can you get a, how do you get permission to go in? I say, well, I'm the professor. I don't go in unless I can video. That's what I do. And so here we have the cheap one at the top and we have the expensive headphone at the bottom. Now, notice the access into the factory is through a clean room dust blaster. Here, we just walk straight into the factory. That's the difference. All right, now both of these factories are operating today. Both of them are sustainable because they are making products to different markets. Are you with me here? Sustainability is about matching your price point with the quality, with the resources that you're using. It's, it's the alignment of all those things. So this factory is, is perfectly aligned because cheap, it's selling a cheap headphone. But this factory here has gone to the higher end and you can see the assembly line is so much more sophisticated. Wow. Okay. So sustainability is about the proper use of resources that is aligned with that product that you're trying to sell. Ah, wow. I thought sustainability was about cutting waste. We're going to talk about that, but I just want to show you the, 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 the differences you see when you go and see factories. So you go to factories in India, China, anywhere in the developing world, not all factories are the same. Not all factories are the same. Okay? So we're going to, we've got lots more examples to show you. But remember, let's stay on point with what we're doing with sustainability. So I went to an interview, S. Oliver, H&M, Puma and Ikea. How many of you know H&M? H&M's opposite KLCC. I saw it last week. Big, beautiful store. Lovely. S. Oliver. Do you know S. Oliver? Okay. And how many of you know Ikea? Yes. And Puma. Okay, very quickly, what are they doing? Are they getting further away from the supply chain or are they getting closer to the supply chain? Either one or the other. I want to, all right, so I want a show of hands. Do you think they're getting further away and just managing more from a distance to save costs? and to be sustainable, or are they getting closer to the supply chain? That is, spending more time working with the suppliers. Hands up for over here, hands up. Hands up for over here, getting closer. Yeah, they're getting closer. They're getting much closer, all right? That, I talked to the global director of Puma, the global supply chain, and she tells me the biggest thing that keeps her awake at night in the business 
is something wrong happening in their third tier supplier, the fourth tier supplier, that affects the product being made by the first tier supplier. Wow. Yeah. These brands increasingly are caring about that. Why? Because you as consumers are increasingly more demanding of the conditions that the supply chain works under. Are you with me here? Okay. Right? So sustainability isn't just about the, you know, the material resources like this, it's also the human resources that are in the supply chain. Okay? It's are we taking care of the human resources? Are we using child labor? Are we are we exposing the factory workers to toxins and things like that? But that's sustainability. Alright? So you've got to think sustainability is much more than just just using less. It's about a proper management of resources. Human resources too. It's not just about plastic or glass. It's not just about use less straws. Okay? There's a whole ecosystem that we think about when we talk about sustainability. Ah, okay. And so here, like, this is just for demonstration. I want to move on to more factories. Put your hand up if you want to see more factories. Some of you. Okay, good, good, good. All right. But the big thing that these companies are doing is increasingly collaboration. Increasing collaboration. That is promising the suppliers that we will order from you. If you work with us, we will order from you. We will continue. We will not cut you off. We will give you certainty about your next two or three years. Giving the suppliers a chance to actually commit to capacity for these big brand names. So it's a it's a win-win relationship with the two. Ah. Okay. So let me get on. I told you there's going to be some theory. Here's the theory here. Okay? If we want to save costs, the factory, there's only three things we need to do. Here. Cut inventory, cut off the staff, and process improvement. That's all. That's all. That's it. That's our theory for today. All right? See these three things here. One, two, three. If you manage those three things, you can make a you can have a much more sustainable factory. Okay? Yes? Why is the factory environment or how the work is treated not a part of the system? Part of your question is isn't sustainability in part about the treatment of the workers, right? Okay, so I have mentioned that, and I'm going to show you examples of how, and the treatment of workers is in part in here. It's how you set up the processes. It's how you set up the processes. And so I'm going to show you some video where in some factories, the worker is doing soldering, and there's a, there's a duct that sucks away all the toxins. Then in other factories, there's no duct, okay? So that's a process difference that you're making on the assembly line for that worker. Some factories are doing that, some factories are not doing that. So process improvement also increase, reduces resources, but also gives a better conditions for the workers to work under, okay? So it's both sides, okay? Process improvement isn't just cut, 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 and replaced with a robot, it's about making everything better. So I, I agree with your point, and maybe I'll show you some video that will actually highlight that. So, And if I don't answer your question properly, just come back to me again, will you? Okay? So I, I love your questions. I'm so happy. All okay? right? Here's a theory framework that, hmm, this has come from many, many interviews with factories. If there are three different things that we want to have change in the organization, and not all of it contributes to sustainability, but in the long term, these items will, it ultimately, you need to address the red areas. A lot of the consultants that go into these developing country factories do not address the red area. It's very easy to address the blue area and partly the green, but getting into the red area, that's the hard part. Because that hard, that red area is where you are w trying to change the owner mindset. And sometimes, yes, you can change the process. Yes, 
you can cut inventory, yes, you can fire administration staff and cut costs, but if the owner is still there with this mindset of not making other changes, then you're not making real change overall. Okay? So the purpose of this is not to go through every box, but if you want to get to the heart of change management in factories, then the red area is the critical part. That's hard. That's hard. All right? Very few factories I've seen do not have an owner with a short-term mindset. Very few. All right? Uh, and those three items about cut inventory, cut people, and process improvement are in the green area. Yes, you can do that. Okay? But you've got to have support from the owner, which is in the red area. So that's the purpose of this framework here. This is not in a textbook. By the way, this is not in a textbook. This is not in management accounting. This is not cost accounting. All right? This is not in an engineering textbook. I made this up based on all my experience. I've, I've spent 20 years in Hong Kong going across the border in China. Okay? Talking to hundreds of owners, consultants. That red area is the biggest challenge today. It still remains that challenge today. Owner mindset. Okay, so now what do we look for in a sustainable factory? Enough of the theory, enough of some background and some framework, what are the big multinationals are doing. What I'm going to show you now are different things to look for in a factory. What does a sustainable factory look like? What does a bad factory look like? Well, let me show you. Okay, so what have we got here? By the way, what are we making here? Come on, what? Hoverboards! We all love them, you know? Fall over, right? How many of you have tried a hoverboard? Anyone? I've tried it, but I don't want to. I thought about bringing it into the class, but I, I don't want to fall over in front of students. Okay, so here we have two factories. So which one do you think is the sustainable factory? Ah, have a look. Which one? One at the top or the one at the bottom? Okay, hands up for the one at the top. Hands up for the one at the bottom. Okay, the one at the top. Much more sustainable. By the way, in 2015 and 16, there were 74 fires around the world caused by hoverboards. Did you know that? 74 fires. Wow. And so, at the end of 2016, US, they banned all hoverboards. None can come into the US. Banned. Until they get a UL standard. Do you know what UL standard is? UL standard, Underwriters Laboratories out of Canada. So UL standard, and so my friend Charles Kermis helped write that standard. And now this factory at the top was the first to get approved to export into USA in 2017. Wow. This one at the top, one at the bottom, I talked to them. Do you care that you cannot export in USA? No! We don't care. There's 200 other countries we can export to. All right? So they're not so worried about the UL standard. Okay, what's the other difference between the two factories that you think that top one is more sustainable? This one here, see this operator, there's over 120 different things you have to do to, to put the hoover board together. This operator knows every one of them. The operator in this factory here, each of these operators just does one or two things. That's all they know. None of these operators could put a hoverboard together. The factory wasn't designed for that. The factory was designed under the Adam Smith principle. That is, you get lots and lots of people doing one little task and you line them all up and that's how you make the product. Okay? So that technically, this is a much better process in making a product than this process here. By the way, that's our QC guy. That's our QC guy, we're more there. Okay, there's nothing to hide here. This is what you see when you go into the factories. All right, so UL standards, very important. What's another thing that you should look for in a factory? What do you have at the top? These are the 
These are the little cells that go into the 20 cell 4.4 amp hour battery. This is a 4.4 hour amp hour battery. Okay? You don't know that, engineering people. Batteries. Okay? So there's 20 of those cells that go into that blue pack. That blue pack just came into the factory and it had Samsung written on it. And I asked the lady, is it really from Samsung? We think so. It's got Samsung written on it. I don't know. You don't know either. You don't know either. That's what comes. Right here at the top, they're importing their own batteries from Samsung, so they know they come from Samsung. Then they put them together and then they test them together. How many of you study battery chemical design for battery management, things like that? Anyone? You're in science, aren't you? What are you in? Business? Well, I haven't seen you in a business school. <laughs> I thought this was a science. It's a mixture of science, um, engineering, engineering, business, all so, sorts. This is, uh, you know... Uh, hands up. Who are the engineers in our audience? Come on, hands up. Come on, you need to answer some questions here, all right? <laughs> all right? So when you put 20 of these cells together, chemical engineering, what's important is every one of those cells have the same level of impedance. So impedance. That is, when you charge, they all charge together. They all discharge together. Okay? All right? Chemical engineering. This is not business. All right? You ask me any questions at I, I'll tell you. Okay? When you get a pack like this, you don't know how efficient that pack is. And that's the source of a lot of fires. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, how many of you are, let's have a look, what we've got here. Ah. What you see on the outside, it says Samsung, is that right? If you don't know what's on the inside, how many of you have got a little hard drive like this? Anyone? Put your hand up if you have a hard drive. Put, everyone put your hand up. You all must have a hard drive. One that gives you a lot of material, right? Okay. Hard drive. Okay, so what happens when your hard drive fails? You hope, for, you hope it fails in the warranty period. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. And what do they normally say on the back of the pack? Void if open, right? So you're not allowed to open it. Because if you open it, you might discover something. So we have a Seagate hard drive. This is a Seagate hard drive, right? Seagate? You don't say yes because I'm a professor. <laughs> right? Say yes because you factually saw the word Seagate, right? Okay, this is Seagate, okay? All right? All right? That failed. It failed, and I opened it up. Here's another Seagate, all right? It's a two terabyte Seagate, right? And it said, if you open it up, you cannot get your money back. So what do I do? Well, I'm I want to look inside. I don't care about the money back. All right? Look, Seagate, Seagate, what's on the inside? Samsung. Oh my, I can't believe that. All right? They wouldn't tell you that. There's Samsung on the inside. Look at that. Pass it around. All right? I can't get the one. But that failed, all right? I can't get money back on that because I opened it up. But look what you see on the inside. Fraud. Okay? Right? You think you're buying something, but there's something on the inside. So watch out when you buy a product. Said It says on the outside, void if open. Alright? Because they don't want you to see the inside. Wow. Alright? This is... Alright. So, uh, is Seagate smart? Yeah, they're smart because they go to Samsung and say, oh, we want you to make... 50,000 of these insights, we'll put them together and we'll make it under our brand. Okay, that's what they do. Alright, maybe that's sustainable, but it's just lying to the consumer because you've got Samsung inside, not Seagate. Ah, Alright, so pass that around. I'm going to trip over my shoelace in a minute, but just want you to see that. Okay. All right, so what you see on the outside is not what you see on the inside. Remember, sustainability is paying attention to detail, paying attention to detail in the factory. 
So here we have two smartwatch batteries. How many of you have got a smartwatch? Yeah, you have a smart? I've got one, we've all got one. Smartwatch, we love our smartwatches. So two smartwatch batteries. One of them, one of those batteries is gone. Closed down. Not sustainable. So here's your question to you. Which one? Which one? All right, let's have a look. So we're going through two factories now. All right, I, I'm going to ask you in a minute to put your hand, show of hands for one or the other. Okay, they're both making the same product. It's a smartwatch that syncs with, uh, you know, your computer system, whatever. Uh, notice we have a lot of workers here. They're all dressed up. They have the anti-static wires but some of them are not connected. At the end of this assembly line at the top, there's a lady playing with their various smartwatches without using fingertip gloves. All right? Now that's a no-no because what happens with your finger is you've got lots of moisture. And when you touch the watch or the product, then the moisture gets onto the product, then dust gets attracted to the product. It makes it harder to clean. All right? But more importantly, if the product is open, the dust gets inside, it can limit the functionality of the electronics inside. Wow. Do we have to pay attention to detail? Yes, you have to! And this anti, see the anti-static, the blue thing around his wrist, the anti-static bag, you saw that? Okay, that is a, you could call that a remote anti-static band. But if you talk to electrical engineers, they'll say a remote anti-static band is not as secure as one made by a wire. Okay, so there's little things you look for. Uh, see the fan next to the solder? Okay, that fan, that's okay, but it's not as good as a suction tube that's sucking away the toxins. You with me here? All right, this is social responsibility, but that's sustainability too because you don't want dead factory workers. All right? Sustainability is you're looking after the workers too. Ah. Okay, so there's our two factories. I just showed, I just pointed out a few different things. Okay? Notice this lady here, she should be uh, working with gloves once they get near the end where they start to put the stuff together. Okay? Fingertip gloves. Doesn't that be a full glove operation? And so here's the question for you. Which one of these factories is gone? Which one? Hands up for the top. Hands up for the bottom. Okay. The one at the top, gone! <laughs> but this one is gone! Closed! Three months after I was there. This is the last video you'll see of that factory. So, what can you see when you go to the factory that may give a signal that that factory is not going to be closed down? What I didn't tell you, and I didn't tell you everything, like Seagate, right? Not telling you what's on the inside. What I didn't tell you is this factory here was an OEM supplier for Sharp. You know, who, how many of you know Sharp? You know Sharp? Oh, yeah. Great, okay. So Sharp is a Japanese company, right? What are the Japanese good at? They're very good at factory management. They're very good at making cars. They're very good at managing factories. Okay? So if you are going to be an OEM supplier for Sharp, they're going to come in and make sure all your processes are set up. They're going to come in and make sure that things are working properly. And so that's the big difference that I notice. This factory at the top. They just started from nowhere hoping to sell on the, to the trade shows to buyers. They didn't do any OEM. They didn't have a major brand that they were selling to. Ah. All right. So sometimes sustainability, sustainability needs a partnership with a major brand name that can come in. Remember I told you at the start, IKEA, S. Oliver, Puma. What are they doing? They're getting closer to the suppliers or they're getting further away? Hands up. They're getting closer. All right? This is the exact point. This, this factory is close to Sharp, the Japanese brand, and so they're still working there today. That's the outcome of that. 
Now we can uh, we can worry about okay those engineers in the class. Another thing you should look for in the factory is separation. What do we mean? Attention to detail and separation. So here we have a smartphone. The smartphone manufacturer must be good, right? Like smartphone manufacturer is probably what the higher end type of factories that you'll see in Asia, in China, in Taiwan. I've done a lot of work with HTC and I see that uh, this, this one here in Bala district just across the border in Hong Kong is got assembly that's equivalent to HTC in Taiwan. Okay, assembly that's equivalent to Apple, Foxcom operations in China. And uh, so it's amazing. This one at the top, separation. No separation. Look at that. You don't do that. You don't just stack up all your IC units in the factory waiting to be used. Okay? So sustainability requires you, it's not just about managing people and processes, but you need to get down to the engineering aspects of the material you're working with. If you don't manage the material and how you stack it up and how you put it together, then that could actually make this material substandard. Then you have waste, then you become less sustainable. Are you with me here? Okay? So knowledge of engineering about what you're making is very critical to sustainability. It's not just a people management, it's not just a business aspect. Engineering is just as critical for sustainability, knowledge of engineering. Okay, so notice here, see how the smartphones are all separated? One, two, three, four. That's it, you keep things across. You keep things managed, you keep things in place. That's what the good factories are doing. <sighs> all right, what about, what do I mean by a dust-free zone? A dust-free zone is going through something like this. How many, Aoni, if you're going to China, go and visit the Aoni factory. Tell them the mad professor came, uh, invited me, Sorry, I recommended that you come and visit them. They will open their doors for you, okay? Aoni, in Boan District in St. Jim. Okay, and so this is inside that factory. It's one that's it's making those top INC headphones. And again, you've got separation here, okay? So very, very good things to look for in the factory. Notice here, this lady is not in prison, okay? All right? Okay, when you see this, the lady is not in prison, okay? This is not bad practice, all right? See the wire? Okay, this lady is in a semi, it's in a semi-enclosed by plastic, by plastic sheeting. It's semi-enclosed to make it more a dust-free zone, okay? That's the only reason why the plastic sheeting is around. The reason why there's wire on the sheeting is so you don't just run into it, okay? The wire is there so you just see it, all right? It's not to keep her in there, okay? All right, so um, some of these factories, if she's working on a process where she's actually cleaning a screen, so it needs to be more of a dust-free zone, and so they put the plastic sheeting around because they want her on the assembly line rather than in another room to make the process more efficient. You with me here? Okay, so she's not in prison here, right? Okay, let's keep moving on this. All right, so what's another thing? Excuse me, I'm, I'm going to uh, um, trip over my lace. All right, car audio manufacturer. What, what do I do when I go in these factories? I just go in and look and look and look? No, I give them advice. What I'm going to do now is show you how you can actually give advice for improvement in the factory. It all starts with when you're on the assembly line and you don't need to know much. My background is not engineering. Okay? I grew up on the farm. I dropped out of school at the end of fourth form. Okay? Year, year 10, I dropped out of school. Okay? So it's not that I'm very smart. Okay? But when you go to the factory, there are simple things that you can do. For example, you ask the factory owner, oh, can you show me the QC sheet? And that's what we're going to do now. And on that QC sheet, there are some rejections. 
rejections are a sign of unsustainability. You don't, when we look in the factory, any rejections or any products that don't meet the quality standard is a sign of unsustainability. You're with me here, right? So when we talk about making processes better, we want to try and use all the resources that we've got. We're converting raw materials into a product. We want to try and do that conversion without wastage. Ah, okay. So what I do when I go to the factory is I ask the owner, show me a QC sheet where this wastage is occurring. So let's have a look, shall we? We've got to see this. So there's the car audio, and we've got a little SD card slot that goes into the car audio. And so there's the QC sheet. And so I'm asking, oh, tell me, where are all the rejections happening at that stage of the assembly line? And it was happening in the slot of the audio, the car audio unit, where you, where you push in the SD card or the micro SD card. You with me here? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is ask them, oh, show me the process leading up to where that unit was rejected. And there were two big, two main processes. One where they're actually screwing the PCB board to the plastic unit, and then another part where the guy is doing soldering. So let's go and have a look at those two parts. This is what we're doing in the factory. So let's have a look. So first of all, okay, we've identified a particular rejection. All of those markings are rejections, and the reason for a rejection is on a different on a different row. Okay, so we pointed out that hole there is not properly aligned. The alignment is not properly is not proper. So okay, so then I asked the owner, please take me to where they're actually screwing the PCB board onto that plastic unit. Okay, so we're going back, working back. And so now we're looking at the guy that's doing the screwing. And so I told them, you need to have a bracket there, so you put the unit on it, screw it, and it doesn't move around. So you can have less variation in that operation. That's what HTC does. Ah, all right. So show me, show me the person doing the soldering. Look, he's doing soldering. He's cross-legged like this, like that. Like, I don't know how they do that, okay? And it's just sitting there, it can, moving around. So I said, we need a more stable environment for that soldering. And by the way, there's a little fan there blowing away the toxins, but that fan shouldn't, we should have a suction tube that's sucking it away. Okay, the, the girl's question right at the early stage. All right? This is substandard uh, operation for factory workers. Okay? Uh, a lot of factories, there's still a lot of improvement to go on, okay? There's still a lot of improvement. But I just want to show you, that's an example of when I go to the factory, give them advice for how to make improvements in those areas. So, you know, there are all these things that you look for when you go to the factory. What I'm going to do now to finish up, remember, the theme, I'm a cost accountant. I teach cost accounting. Have I talked about numbers today? Not at all. What I've talked about are the things that cause costs to happen. You with me here? Costs are a result of poor process. Costs are a result of a poor configuration of the factory. Costs are a result of buying too much inventory. Costs are a result of having the people in the right, wrong area. Okay? Or poorly trained. You with me here? So when I teach costs accounting, I want to show you the, the resources that cause costs to occur. If you want to manage costs, you need to understand what is the environment those costs are being incurred in. Ah, wow. You're probably saying, why don't textbooks talk about that? Well, I haven't had a chance to write a good textbook yet, all right? <laughs> so uh, here are all the different things that I've learned. I've visited and videoed over 35 factories now in the last four years, okay? And all pro bono, they didn't pay me, no one's paid me to do this. I just love doing this, because I want to bring these insights into the classroom to you, okay? I want to show you stuff that textbooks cannot show you through your reading. 
Okay, so these are things I've learned. Receiving inspection, documentation, attention to detail, QC records, rejects, the mind of a supplier. At the end of the day, the mind of a supplier is probably the most critical thing. Okay, the owner of the factory. Okay, do they really care about making the best product in the world? Or they just want to make some profit, um, do the IPO, get the money and buy property and retire. I can tell you that is the mindset of most of the factory owners I have met. Let me repeat, I can tell you that is the mindset of most of the factory owners I have met. It's all about making money. It's all about just cranking out volume, making a profit so, and then buying property. Okay? There's very few factory owners I have met that want to make the best product in the world, like Steve Jobs. But I have met some, and there's one or two of my YouTube clips where I've actually, I actually take you in and I show the factory, and the factory owner is what I call the diamond in the rough, rough. He wants to make the best product in the world. Okay, finishing up, we're going to finish up with a factory audit. So, this is real, it's a real product, we're making we're sourcing picture frames. I'm going to show you two factories. I'm, because I've done some factory audits. Now, factory audit is different from a financial audit. How many of you have studied auditing and accounting? Boring. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I know where you feel. All right? Factory audit is different. Factory audit is about, does the factory have all the processes in place? Are they looking after the people? So social responsibility, things like that, okay, which is sustainability. So factory audit, in some ways, is much more about a sustainability than a financial accounting statement audit, okay? Financial accounting statement audit, that's more about corporate governance, not necessarily about sustainability. Ah, okay, so here are two factories, and let's start. We're making a picture frame. How many of you know what the product we're talking about? It's a picture frame. You put on your mantelpiece, and it'll show all your photos from your last holiday. You know, to Sunway Lagoon. Okay, all right. So that's the product. This is a real one. Buyer approached me less than two years ago. Neil, all right, two factories. I want you to go and order. Tell me which one should I buy from? Right, so let's have a look. Well, before we go to the factory, let's go on the website and do some investigation. And so we have the blue factory, we have the red factory, and that's what we find out on the web. We're, there we have the blue factory here, CT signage, and they say they have all of these accreditations and verifications, blah, blah, blah. And then we have Joy Hong. Same, this is the website. We haven't even visited the factory. Then we go further into the blue factory, then we got the red factory. The red factory is showing they've got lots of certificates and things like that online. Put your hand up. Right now, we haven't visited the factory. Which one do you like the most so far, the blue or the red? Hands up for the blue, hands up for the red. Why the red? Because of all the certificates? They're all fake. Don't believe all that. All right? It's all fake! Don't. All right? You should know by now, okay? You've got to see with your own eyes, all right? So let's go and see the factories now. And remember, we've got our red and the blue. The, uh, the red is at the bottom, the blue is at the top. Apologies, I haven't got the, I should have had the color around each. Okay, remember, we're sourcing picture frames. My client in the USA wants to buy 2,000 of them. And then a month after he's going to buy 2,000 more, a month after he's going to buy 2,000 more. So a 6,000 order over about three months. Well, okay, large order. All right. So here we have the two, all right? So that's the general office area. So let's go to the next stage. Remember, the blue at the top and we've got the red at the bottom. Well, this is the burn-in room. The engineering people, you will know this, that when you make anything with a battery, you need to go and plug it in and test it for four hours to eight hours before you even ship. And you need to do that on 100% of the products. You can't just do it on 20%. All right? So they call that a burn-in room. In other words, you're actually burning in the product by actually charging it up and discharging it. Ah, and so that's the 
the details of the burn-in rate. Okay, remember, your task is to choose the factory for my client. Okay, so let's go to the next stage. So we go into the factory. I noticed that the windows, we've got this dust-free area, it just got windows that are open to let the air in because it's a hot day. And so we have the uh, dust cleaning uh, door here going into the joy hum, the red factory, remember? Blue at the top, red at the bottom. Okay, so now we go in again and let's go to our final product and we see what we're going to see. So, you've had a chance now to have a look at two factories and you're going to give advice to the client. Which one would you ask the client to buy from? Now before that, maybe, hands up for the blue factory by the way, hands up if you like the blue, anyone? All right? Anyone like the red factory, hands up for the red? Okay, you all like the red factory, it looks pristine, everything like that. But remember, the client, over the next three months, is going to buy 6,000 units. What if the blue factory is cheaper than the red factory? Here's the question to you. How much cheaper should the blue factory be for you to change your mind? Think about that. Right? So, how much would you bid for the price for this one? Can we start at 17 17 US dollar FOB? Do we have 17 FOB? 17 US, it's more than that, but do we have a bid? Anyone? What's the cost for the top one? Huh? What's the bid for the top one? Uh, we're going to come to that, but let's start with this one. Alright, because everyone put down, everyone put their hand up for the red. Alright, how much? We're going to start with 17. Anyone for 17? Do we have 17 here? 17 here for 17? We have 17. Alright, can we have 18? It's more than 17. 18, 18, 18. 18 over here. Anyone for 19? 19 at the top. What about 20? It's more. 20 at the back. 21. 21. 21. 21 at the back. It's higher than 22. Anyone for 23? Anyone for 23 here? Yes. Okay. This one here, 2,000 units minimum order is $23 per unit. Ah. What about this one here? How much are you going to bid for this one? Remember, this is the one you didn't like, the blue factory. 10. 10, we're starting at 10, you know, 5, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 here, 11, 12 at the back, 12 at the back, can we have 12, can we have 13, 30, 30, 13 here, can we have 14, we have 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14 over here, 14, 15, we have 15, we need more, 15, this battery's not going to sell to you for 15, anyone for 16, 16, 16 over here, 17, anyone for 17, can we have 17, 17, 17, 17, this factory's still not going to sell it to you, we need more. 20. 20 is the minimum for this one. So, three dollars difference. So, hands up, which one are you going to buy from? Remember, 6,000 units is a three dollar difference. What's 6,000 times three? 18,000 US dollars. Put your hand up if you think that's worth the difference. So now I'm going to ask you again, which factory are you going to recommend to my client? Hands up for the blue, for 20 US dollar FOB. Hands up for the red. Come on, you've got to make a decision here. Economic decision. All right, you still like the red. You're still happy to pay $3 more FOB. Okay? So, do you want to know what happened? Okay, I recommended the red, and this is what happened. The first model was 2,000 units, 23 US dollars. Then the client came back less than a month later and the red factory, they put it up. They, it was 23 US dollars again, but when they got to a third order, they put up 28 US dollars. And the client, the, and the third order was a different model, but it wasn't much different in terms of the costs. And the client came out to me, Neil, at 28 US dollar FOB, I cannot make money. I cannot make money. This is no, no, no longer a business proposition. What do I do? And so I came back and I said, okay, let's go back to the blue factory and you spend one US dollar FOB, at least one, on QC inspection. Because that's the only reason why I didn't like the blue factory, because it looked dirty, it looked clean, it looked 
it looked rampant for it looked right for making products that were going to fail. Well, how do you overcome that? You get QC inspections in. You have more monitoring. You do what IKEA, Puma, S. Oliver are doing. You go in and you monitor the supplier. Ah, even if they're a bad supplier, monitoring works. Ah, and so that blue factory, 20 US dollars plus one US dollar for QC, 2,000 units, that's $2,000 for QC. How many days of QC would that give you? That will give you about four and a half days of someone at the factory monitoring the production. Ah, you see? It's not just one or the other. Ah, you see, that really good red factory that you'll put your hand up for, that was too good. It was too good. In other words, it was too powerful for you as a client that just wanted to buy 2,000 units. And so it was easy for them to put it up to 25 to 28 US dollar once they locked you in. Gotcha. You see? So be careful. Perfect factory, perfect power. Ah. In some ways, this red factory is the perfect factory. It's sustainable. But also, a good sustainable factory gets power. And so when I talk to factory owners about sustainability, I say, if you invest more in sustainability and your quality control and you make your factory stronger, you'll be more powerful to actually put the price up when clients come and ask for reorders, like the factory, red factory. So in closing today, I am passionate about going into China and helping factories. I do it on a pro bono basis because ultimately I want to I want to bring a message to you and the world about factories in developing countries that the media is not telling you about. I want to bring a message to the world about factories and about companies that the media is not telling you about. The media is always hyping, always hyping the market, always hyping the top line growth. It never talks about the supply chain. It never talks about how companies are helping factories in developing, country, in developing countries. The brand names are increasingly helping factories in developing countries more as a result of pressure from you, the consumer. So that's a good thing. For sustainability, it requires that increased pressure from you, the consumer. All right? I'm trying to contribute to this area by actually showing you what do, what do factories look like, the good ones and the bad ones, and hopefully make you a more informed consumer. Because at the end of the day, you only see this product, but you never see the inside. And you saw what you saw today. Thank you very much.